So we gather tonight for the second consecutive week now in which we have gathered for special celebrations, not following the general liturgical calendar uh, that prescribes and governs the whole church. Last Sunday, you'll recall, we had the Mass for the anniversary of the dedication of the church, recalling November 3rd, 1991, when this church was blessed, designated for sacred worship, so that all of us who gather here to celebrate the Eucharist could be blessed and transformed by God's grace. Today we celebrate the feast of our patron, St. Leo the Great, the first pope to bear the honor of being called the Great, a man who was chosen by God to lead his church in the perilous times of the fifth century to protect her as he did with such faith and courage and strength. And the gospel that we just heard from was the same gospel that was proclaimed last week for the Mass for the dedication of a church. And how fitting, when reflecting upon the identity of the church or celebrating the feast day of one chosen to lead her as our Pope, the gospel is the same. And it reminds us of the twofold mission of Christ, why he came. First and primarily, of course, to offer his life on the cross, to then rise from the dead, to show us the eternal life that he offers to us by the forgiveness of our sins. This is the incomparable blessing that faith gives to us. For you and I have the hope of eternal life only because of one thing, and that is the cross, the offering of the Son of God to his heavenly Father, and that his rising from the dead to show us that never-ending life meant for us who are united to him. But then there is a second part of his mission, and that is his establishment of the church. The church is the necessary connection, if you will, between the saving action of Christ and our experience of its merits. You and I are united to Christ through the church, first accomplished in our baptism, and then we're sustained in our journey of faith by the power of God's grace that is dispensed through the life of the church. We thank God for the grace that he gave to this fisherman, Peter, who boldly proclaims in the gospel that Jesus, the Son of the living God, the Christ, and for his infinitely wise and loving plan to establish his church on the foundation of Peter's profession and the authority given then to Peter and the apostles and their successors throughout the ages who are our bishops to guide us always in the truth of our faith. How grateful we are to those who carry out that responsibility with such fidelity and zeal for us in a special way, this man so long ago who is our patron. So these two realities are part of our life of faith. And so what are we then to do? Our second reading, I think, gives us the answer. It's from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It's one of the four letters called the Captivity Epistles, believed to have been written by St. Paul while he was in prison. And this one is his great letter about the church and his emphasis on the most important aspect of our life in the church, which is the unity that our faith is meant to accomplish in us. And so St. Paul writes this, that we are to live in a manner worthy of the call that we have received with all humility gentleness, patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. That is a mouthful, and that is an awesome call that is given to us. You and I are meant to live differently now that we are in Christ. You and I are meant to be kind and forgiving, to always seek that commune with each other that this Eucharist symbolizes and then is meant to accomplish. 
We are called to be one body and one spirit. And how sad are all those divisions that afflicts us. And how each of us can succumb so easily to be dominated by what I think or what I know to be right or true or what I want. That insidious sin of pride that afflicts us. But you are, and I are meant to be hope-filled, trusting always in God's plan, united by, in the one God, by our faith and our baptism, this God who is over all and through all and in all. That is how you and I are meant to live. And that is how the church is meant to guide us always to strive to live. And so we gather today on the vigil of our parish patronal feast day. And we thank God for this man 16 centuries ago who worked tirelessly and courageously to defend the faith, this faith that we receive and treasure so many years later. And we continue in this promise that Christ gave to Peter and the apostles that no matter what the attacks are upon the church by so many in our culture and in so many cultures throughout the ages, what they have been and what they always will be, that she still stands and that she will always stand to proclaim the truth of Christ and the eternal life that is offered to all only through him.